Welcome, dear viewers, to a video coming to you right now of me, someone who has never made a doll before, making a doll, a project that I've wanted to do for a little while now, ever since I, I watch a lot of doll YouTubers that usually remake their, uh, remake Monster High dolls, but in this case I decided to make my own doll. Part of the inspiration was this clown doll you see before you. I had just drawn this like little clown snow leopard and I had this clown doll already who was like wire and like porcelain. Um, I also have another doll, this big Russian doll, and she's also sort of a porcelain. And additionally, I had this little sculpture I made out of clay and wire a while ago, which is why I had some of these materials to begin with. Um, I knew that I had enough to start making the doll, although you'll see a little while later some of the issues that I ran into. Uh, I apologize for the angle that we start out at. I mean, I guess not apologize. I decided that I would go for a bit of a more comfortable angle for the beginning of this project, at least. I later transferred to my actual like work table, but it was kind of a mess at the time. So I just sat on my floor and I tried to figure out wire and then didn't cut the wire because I realized that I didn't have a drawing planned out at all. Um, and I was just gonna cut wire. And so I sketched out a drawing real fast. I mean, I sped that up, but you know, real fast and mushed around the Sculpey. I did cut out a very large amount of me mushing up Sculpey from this video. And so the body is just wire covered in foil and then covered in Sculpey. I only had a little bit of Sculpey and I was really worried that I would run out by the end of the project. I didn't, luckily, but I was worried for like a hot second there. Um, I definitely didn't do this the best I could. I made the torso too long and I wasn't really thinking through some of the beginning aspects of this project, like allowing her middle to bend. I kind of put too much clay for it to easily uh, bend. And then I also had to put this little cross section at the top of her head because I wanted the head to like stick on more carefully. Her head also doesn't rotate, which like I know that that matters to a lot of people, but I guess it didn't matter enough to me to make it rotate. Um, the top portion of her body does rotate, so there's that. So I spent a really long time making her head very round and then just working more stuff into her head. I was so nervous. I mean, I had never really done a project like this in a very long time. So I spent a lot of time just starting this body. And like you could see of the the like little frog sculpture at the beginning, I um, tend not to finish projects. So I wasn't even sure how far I'd get in this one. And uh, one of the reasons I chose this drawing was because it was very like cartoony. So it had these little like balls as um, as part of her face sort of Garfield-esque balls. And I kept making sure that they were the same size. So that's where you get me like pushing them together and making sure that they're close to the same size. I was so nervous about them being slightly different sizes that I didn't notice that they actually were slightly different sizes. But don't worry about that. This whole thing is just gonna be a giant struggle in symmetry actually. Um, and then I have these clay tools, which I also bought when I bought the clay a long while ago. And this project was like me learning how to use them again, because like I sort of learned how to use them the first time. And then once I got to this part of the project, I was like, oh no, I don't know how to use them. And I kept using them wrong and using the wrong tools uh, for whatever thing I was trying at the time. So that was a real adventure, misadventure. I also realized that the original sketch was just like little balls on her face, but she kind of has a nose bridge in my drawing and I gave her a bit more of a defined nose bridge than was even in the drawing at the time. Um, and I just worked real hard to smooth that out and kind of make everything very um, smoothed out and neat. I don't know how to explain it. Um, basically, 
when I like looked at the drawing the first time, I was like, this is just like a really cartoony little thing. And then once it came to actually sculpting it, I was like, what about like definition for her eyes? And like, how does the little balls like blend into the face? And all of the stuff that you really have to think about while you're sculpting, or I guess preferably before you're sculpting, but um, I didn't think about it at all because that's just me. So I guess maybe I could have just made this like head a ball but instead I gave it a lot more definition. I do wish it weren't actually as much of like a round, perfectly round ball because her face in the drawing is like a little bit wider. So I think I should have made it sort of an, an ov ovular shape, um, I guess. I still didn't, I didn't do um actually like defined eyes for the sculpting. I just did the defined sort of like brow line. Um, because I just wasn't confident in my ability to like carve it on a real small scale. Although I think also that worked out since like um, the thing that I, the eyes that I eventually go with are very like graphically aligned. So it was probably better to have more of a surface besides the fact that it just didn't need to have too much definition. Um, and I put like a little nose on her. The nose is also more defined than it and like larger than it is in the original drawing. That was just something where I was looking at pictures of snow leopards trying to figure out what their noses looked like and realize that like that's how big the bridge of the like the bridge of the face was and it would have to be a larger nose. I, I know that this I also feel like she would have looked more like a snow leopard if her face were wider and rounder because for a long time in this video she does look like a lion. I think she has a very lion shaped face um, with the like wide nose bridge and everything like that. Um, and fun fact, snow leopards are actually more closely related to tigers than they are to lions or leopards. Um, so throughout I'm just smoothing down um, a lot of the face portions and I added actual like brows for her sort of and I smooth those into the uh, clay and I've sp sped up a lot of more things here because uh, I, as I go on I just sped up more of the video because things were taking a while and I almost gave her a little mouth and then I took it off and I don't know if I meant to put the mouth back on but I might have just forgotten to do it I don't, I don't know. I mean, the original video doesn't, or the original picture doesn't have like a little mouth on her. So I just didn't give her a sort of chin bottom. She just has like the little balls, which are like the top draw. Um, I put on the ears, I made the hands, and then my camera battery was having a lot of issues that day. I found out that like both my chargers have issues and don't work that well. So, um, there's this footage of me putting together the hands and actually putting them on the arms. And then there's like not a lot. Also, hello, my head. I'm sorry about my head. It's just kind of there a lot of the time, um, at least for this beginning portion. And uh, I just stuck these little, to make the uh, hands and feet, I basically just stuck little tubes onto her arms and legs and then I made the feet and hands sort of separately and then kind of like mashed them onto those tubes um and I think I have a little bit of footage of that no I don't have any footage of that I lied I had some footage but it was probably too bad for me to put it in this video and I already forgot about that anyways they look like this I was really happy with them they're you know little hands and feet they have four fingers and toes because cats tend to have like four toes. I also made little paw pads for them and realized that they were too big to put on the hands. So instead I ended up carving the paw pads into the hands. Um, also I spent like way too long trying to carve the paw pads into like something that was like, not like, I don't know, cat shaped. Um, and yeah, I guess I just thought that it would it would be able to go on the hands, but it didn't work out like that. One other thing I'll note here is that 
I baked this a couple of times. I'm not really an expert in Sculpey, and I, like, don't do any sculpting, which is why you just see me, like, sticking these on here, and I don't know if they'll stay. I mean, they've stayed so far, so I guess I'm good. But I had already baked this, like, body portion by the time that, um, I was working in the hands and feet. And I, before I made the head, I actually baked the, like, main body portion. So this thing was baked a couple times, and it wasn't until after the hands and feet were, like, on the sticks that I baked it for a final time. Um, and I baked them while they're on the sticks, because I think it shrinks. I'm not a Sculpey expert. Post, uh, Sculpey-ing, I wrapped everything in Halloween gauze that I had left over from a few years ago. And I think this really helped, like, flesh out the body. I, I just didn't want it to be, like, entirely wire underneath. And so I, I felt like that worked out. Um, here are the fabrics. I was just deciding between, like, some random fabric I had lying around. Because in the original drawing, she has, like, different colors on each side of her little, like, onesie. I knew I wouldn't be able to find any coloring stuff. So uh, I just went with black and white. And then I had the sewing kit, which is just, like, a really cheap travel sewing kit. And that's my pin cushion, which is a crocheted snake. Probably don't use crocheted objects for pin cushions, but that's just what I have. Also, it's very painful because the needles keep going through the other side. Um, so I made like some templates out of tissue. <clears throat> I made some templates out of tissue and then I just cut around them. I don't know how to sew. And this is probably, this is where I entered sewing hell, which is just a place where I have to sew things and I don't know how to sew. So this is me putting on the attempted outfit, uh, take one, and it actually, the sleeves worked out better than I thought they would, but it was very fraying. Oh, also here's me tearing up a mask. Um, I actually took the elastic off the mask, uh, to put in her sleeves and then I separated the blue out. We'll work on that later. And then here's me doing everything over again. Uh, I decided to do a second pass on her garment because it was, I was just having a nightmare. And here's everything cut out for a second time and then glued at the like edges to prevent them from fraying because her outfit was fraying so much um, that I even did that. Uh, I'm not good at sewing. <laughs> I'm really not good. Uh, Here's the garment a second time. It's very asymmetrical. Please ignore how asymmetrical it is. But here's it without the sleeves. Uh, I didn't take that much footage of it. And then here's also the only thing that I bought for this project. Actually, not the only thing. I also bought pom-pom balls. But apparently I didn't own any acrylic paint. So halfway through sewing it, I gave up on the sewing. I had some acrylic paint, which I had purchased. Um, just for this project, and then it was like way more acrylic paint than I thought it would be because I don't know what sizes acrylic paint comes in. Um, so just moving on to the acrylic paint, I also haven't worked with acrylic paint before, and I had a good time! I had a good time doing the acrylic paint. I uh, drew on the eyes and just like graphite so that I wouldn't forget where they are supposed to go. and added like more definition to around her like mouth and stuff. I didn't want her to just be like all white because I felt like that wouldn't be interesting. So I went with like a gray. Also her like her body is actually mixed with like gray and a little bit of red and blue. Basically not enough red to see it, but she is like a little bit blue and just added a lot of definition around various areas in her self. And this part I did all as a speed paint because it took me a long time to paint and I had lots of footage, unlike with the hands where I forgot to take footage of the hands and stuff like that. Um, and the detail of the pink on the nose really made me happy, just so you know. So, like I said, I don't have that much experience in painting and I know that like most sort of like doll, like the doll customizer type stuff I usually watch is First of all, people who have that magical spray that makes it possible for you to draw in pencil on things. And then um, people who like use like pastels, which like I hate pastels. They make my skin crawl is the issue. So like I can't, I don't, I'm not a fan of pastels. And then watercolor pencils and um, things like that. And I don't have any familiarity really 
with uh, watercolor pencils. I think I've used them before and they were fine. But I just went with acrylic paint and she has a really chunky sort of eye shape. So that worked out um, because I'm not trying to do like really thin lashes. It was hard enough to do her little like eyebrows, which are just kind of scattered lines, um, much less eyelashes. So I just went ahead and I did her eye paint. It's supposed to mimic like how a snow leopard has kind of dark lines around its eyes. If you look at a snow leopard, it's a very stylized version of that. Um, and then the spots, of course, most of the ones on the rest of her body got covered up, but the ones on her head, I tried to make symmetrical-ish. It sort of worked out. Um, but I thought they really helped her look more like an actual snow leopard. Um, and her eyes were just a very simple, like, blue, and then I think a little bit of a darker blue on the inside. In the original, her eyes were meant to be, like, they're supposed to be more eerie. I think on the doll, they actually look a little cuter than the intent, you know, which was to make them look not spookier exactly, but, like, they're supposed to look very, like, vacant. I like the idea of her eyes being very vacant. Um... <laughs> There's just some, something about the ice blue eyes, but I think I made them a little dark and um, not ice blue, but they look cute anyways. I even used the head of a pin to like put in the pupils of her eyes. And then I messed up one side, of course, and spent so long trying to even them out. I, I think I did some of the evening out off camera and um, this, yeah, I, I just skip here to when I'm painting the little paw pads. I ended up painting them really messily on both sides and then just cleaning them up. Which I did a lot of cleaning up around the uh, eyes. I painted this all in one day, so luckily I didn't have to like remix paints or anything like that. I just like mixed a lot of the kind of whitish gray color that she was. And then um, from there I mixed in like more black and blue to make the paw pads and the rest of her. I added more definition on the pads also, um, both here on the hands and later on the feet. So it would kind of look like paw pads or like palms. I, they're kind of a mix between palms and paw pads. So uh, here's here's her after painting. I was really happy with her. I, I was sitting here for a few days just like looking at her and being like, I love her so much because I've never done a project like this. So it was really interesting. Um, I don't know, to, to like have something because like I normally just do drawings so I don't have anything physical to hold but now I'm like I'm holding her right now. She's beautiful and I love her. Um, and here's me painting her feet, attempting to paint her feet, her little toesies on the bottom of her foot. Uh, at this point I was Pretty happy with the, the sloppy method of painting the feet and hands really messily and then cleaning them up afterwards. That was fine. And uh, I was really speeding through the painting at this point because I didn't have to worry about like blending and things like that. It took a while to blend her face. I spent all of last Saturday morning. This, this whole thing took, I started two Saturdays ago. It took me like all of, I think, or it might have been a Sunday that I started this project but it took me like all of a Sunday night and then all of a Saturday morning to paint her. Between the um oh I also put some matte varnish on her just slap some matte varnish on there but between the painting and the sculpting I had done the little outfit which was ended up being I mean a nightmare to put on but and ended up very asymmetrical but I was like happy with it enough to move along. I was not prepared to keep going and uh, I decided to do her little like cuffs in the mask that I got up earlier. So her cuffs are actually made out of this little the little like blue filter part of the surgical masks that I just had left over because it's been a hell of a pandemic and I have a lot of these laying around that are just not really usable anymore. And I just tied them at legs and feet. I didn't feel like sewing them to her outfit. I sewed her into her outfit actually because I just gave up on making it impermanent. Like it was taking too long and then I 
added her little pom-pom balls on her outfit. And it was really coming together. I was really uh, happy with how it was looking. I, uh, you know, her outfit is not something I'm totally happy with, but it ended up being good enough for me to, you know, I really enjoyed the sculpting and painting part of this project. And the outfit was just kind of like, ah, I have to do this to cover her up. And it could be better, definitely. Her neck ruffle was kind of the last thing to do, although not quite the last. And I just took a really long, it was like pieces of the mask that I glued together and I put them in one long string and then tightened that string and then tied it around her neck um, and spent a while adjusting it into a circle. The glue ended up being sort of a hindrance because the parts where it was glued together it ended up really wonky. And then I did eventually use more glue to like stiffen out it so it wouldn't uh, get so messed up when I was sort of laying her down. But even now the back of it is sort of like messed up. So I just lay her on her front if she has to lay on the table. Um, I also tried to glue her hands in place, but it didn't really work. The glue came off, but that's good anyways, because her hands are kind of stuck on the metal sticks, but I could rotate them because the glue gives enough. It just allows it to rotate still. And then there's also the tail, which I forgot. And you might have remembered I forgot. I had the sleeve of this old shirt that I just uh, sewed into a little tail. And then I added some acrylic paint. And I later asked, added some Posca because the acrylic paint didn't turn out totally black. Um, it, it, it did spread a lot, as you might be able to see. Um, which, which I thought was fine because it's supposed to be kind of gray anyways. Um, but the acrylic the the using the posca afterwards i also didn't have a good way to attach it to her so it ended up just being attached to her back and i sewed that on really quick and sloppily so it doesn't really hold a pose so much i mean like the tail itself holds a pose but it doesn't really stand up it has to be kind of maneuvered behind her but but that was the very last step and so this doll is complete um I did a little photo shoot with her. I even photoshopped in some little balls so she could uh, be... And here's some non-photoshopped balls. And here's her sitting. She can pose, although her torso's a little long. Here's her with my other clown and with one of my cat's toys and some of my unicorn Tokidoki dolls and just all of the other little odds and ends. Um, thank you for watching. It's been a heck of a video. I hope you enjoyed watching me create my first ever art doll and all of the pitfalls that came with it. Um, and, uh, and hit that like button and subscribe. Have a nice day. Peace.